everyone, welcome to the Hard Room. I am Travis Bruce, and today we're going to be doing another Any Hard Spotlight. I have with us today a director, and he has a fun short that I just saw, and it's called Greed and Gore. I have with us today director, filmmaker, Adam Kirkley. Adam, welcome to the Hard Room. Hey, man. Thank you so much for having me on. Uh, yeah, it's obviously great to be here, and uh, I really appreciate you checking out the short, and anyone else who's checked it out, uh, I really, really appreciate it. So, a lot of people worked really hard on it, mostly me, but yeah, <laughs> we appreciate it. Listen, man, it's an absolute blast. I mean, because it's, it's mixing a, a bank heist and a horror together. So, tell my watchers a little bit about Greed and Gore. Yeah, so the uh, basic plot is just uh, five, uh, you know, bank robbers uh, do a heist, and then they pick the wrong safe house, and, uh, you know, bad things happen from there on out. Um, it's a really simple kind of, like, setup, uh, really and truly, um, and we really wanted something simple to set up to be a vehicle into exploring a lot of practical effects, which, uh, you know, if anyone loves practical effects, they'll love... The practical effects in the film. I'm sure we'll get into talking about a bit of practical effects later, but that's kind of it. You know, there was no real like, oh, we need to tell some certain story or anything like that. And I, I like playing with certain themes and stuff in the film that are, that are subtle and some more so than others. But uh, yeah, it was really truly just that, like just something you know, make a very very simple slasher film that has, uh, you know, a lot of good kills, and then, you know, it's it's in a good audience movie, you know, it's a good theater movie. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it, and it's almost like one of those mystery movies, too, where, like, it's like, who is the killer? Yeah. Yeah, we wanted to do that, like, subtly. It's a little spoiler alert here for people, but uh, <laughs> it's, it is and it isn't, because, like, we wanted to have a bit of that, but also not go too crazy with it and just go, like simple with it and the, simple in the sense that like you know people most people will know like yeah it's probably not going to be the, the way it's kind of telegraphed the out, obvious so. yeah yeah and then <laughs> so like yeah that that was kind of the the point of it when we were writing we we're like let's not play into tropes too much you know like let's try and make this not as realistic as possible but maybe realism isn't the word the right word uh, that came in my brain, but uh, it's like, I always watch a horror movie and I'm like, why didn't they do this? How come, like, where is this? I can see this, therefore this exists in, you've established this, whether or not you realize it or not in this world, you know, there's power, therefore you're close to, you know, civilization, therefore, you know, all these little things where I watch certain horror movies, maybe it's bad that I nitpick at stuff like that, but I'm like, <laughs> you know, or why didn't she do this? How come she, yeah. you know, or like, Anyways, it's all those little things. So that's what we tried to like, you know, like, okay, like if they were to do, you know, that, then what would happen? Or if these people were to fight somebody who was kind of, you know, an axe murderer, what would happen? So anyways. Mm -hmm. And also too, I mean, it's, it's a bunch of criminals. So the aspect of criminals can't trust other criminals and there's a lot of money involved. Exactly. So, so like, you can tell no one really trusts each other from the jump because there's a lot of money involved. And once people start dying off, they start going after each other. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, that's something we wanted to. That's like some of the subtle like stuff I, I wanted to put in the in the script. It just it is like the greed element of the movie. You know, of just like you know when anything's involved, money or resource, people just get greedy. And more more greedy, the more the amount goes up. So I, I wanted to play with that as a theme, you know, the the greed element of it all with the money, and it's like the uh, the hungry dog salivating over the meat, you know, in the old cartoon, yes. you know, if it's like right in front of them. <laughs> like, yeah. Now let's talk about the gore. Yeah, you, you have a lot of practical and, gore, which is let me give you a applause for that. Thank you. Now this thank all. You. Th now, there's a fucking amazing headshot in, in that. How did that, how did you make that practical effect work? So, the, uh, which one? The one where the head separates or the one where the head? The, yes. Yeah. Actually, so, both. Yeah, I mean, I, I can talk about both. So, uh, again, spoiler alert. But uh, <laughs> shout out to our uh, FX team, uh, Locked in the Cellar. Um, they did an amazing job. You can check them out yes. on Instagram. Yes. We share this, and I'll tag them. I'll be sure to tag them. They'll love this. 
Uh, and I'll release some behind the scenes video of how we pulled off that shot fully, but um, it's a lot of stages, honestly and truly. And, uh, you know, it starts with something simple of the guy, you know, moving off camera to get shot. The fall, we cut for like three hours. He gets in makeup and they put a tube on his neck so it's gushing out. And then they, they built a dummy um, off the floor with a tube coming out of its head. So, yeah, we filmed that. Essentially, it, it all the blood flies out. Um, uh, but his head is still there. Like, his, his actual head, is, well, the dummy's head is still there. And then uh, we clear it out. We get a clean plate of, you know, all the blood. And before that, I got a clean plate of just the floor. And so I have those three layers to build up in, in uh, you know, compositing. And then from there, it's just kind of like building it up layer by layer. I'm sure there's like a hundred layers in compositing to get it all to, to work. So it's all like real elements, uh, you know what I mean? So like it's, it's the real head, it's the real floor, it's the real blood that came out. And then we put in a few other little, um, you know, pop effects or, you know, little things like that to, to get it to, to do its thing. And like if you watch it frame by frame, which I did a million times, it's, it's less than a second long. Um, but it, it works. So like it does the trick. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, and it worked, it worked really well. So I'm happy with like, how that oh, one came out. Oh shit. Yeah. I was yeah. like, Oh shit. <laughs> yeah. Cause like they, we always, when we were also doing the pre-production, we we're like every horror movie I watch, like when I do these festival circuits, they always have maybe one good effect. And then if, if that, and then it's always like implied stuff and all that. And I know it's just like a horror fan, and when you're going to like a small convention or like a small festival, even a bigger festival, you're like, well, show me the thing, like show off a bit. Is kind of how I feel. Like let's let's see some stuff because you know like people can do it. So I was like, let's figure out how we can do it just enough that it's not too gratuitous, although it is gratuitous. But like, it is. It's just it's it's just enough that it doesn't like you don't blow the gag too too much, you know. So. Um, and like show like you know imply what's going to happen i always like just seeing that happen in movies action movies or horror or even just a good thriller or something like that or a good drama where they show you something kind of gnarly and you're like oh how'd they do that yeah and i'm like whoa and 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 the other scene which is the other head where it separates apart like yeah that was an amazing impractical effect thanks man thanks and again another shout out to uh locked in the cellar so uh that actor, uh, Matt Bell, he, uh, he's a good friend of mine. So we had um, them cast his head. So they put all the goo on his head and they'd make like a version of his head. Um, and then so again, it's a lot of just pieces. You know, we film him in the spot doing those things. The axe comes around um, and then it's a dummy separating. Again, there's a bit of compositing work in there. They're in green suits, puppeting the body down um, on, on pegs and stuff. Um, and then in post, I'll replace the dummy's eyes with uh, the actor's eyes, so it adds that bit of realism. Because like the dummy's eyes, like one was going this way, and one was going that way. It just didn't. <laughs> when I watched the first time, like in editing, I was like, "Oh no, I've wasted all my money." Like, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when you add in all the stuff and you color it just right, you add in a few little like sweetener, kind of like blood effects. It it just it it makes it work. And the other thing I I will say too, like especially with that like the headshot and, and the head separating shot the big thing that like really really sells it too is sound like i would say sound is like 60 percent of selling that effect like once you add all the the slop the yes it's like <laughs> then you're like oh yeah that's it's they're put it puts Perfect. visuals in your mind that weren't there you know so. yes <laughs> now now, when you were writing this movie and putting this movie together, was it sh was it hard to make it into a short? Uh, yes and no. Um, it, it like I always find it a good exercise to write a short, just because you know it's easy to to get long winded. Um, so like it was, it wasn't too bad to get it to like fifteen pages. It was roughly about fifteen pages, I think, uh, for the final draft. Um, and, uh, like, it wasn't bad, although, like, when you write stuff like this, you leave so much out that you're like, oh, where are we going to put all this? Um, and so, like, obviously, 
like a good segue here to talk about like we're gonna flip it into a feature um, next fall. We're gonna start filming. We're we're doing a lot of pre-production work. It's very early stages, but um, you know we we took a lot of those like backstories we wrote for characters or whatever like the the heist itself or just little stuff like that that we're like oh like what could it mean where does this axe person come from is it the axe person to begin with or so it's all those little things that you have all these conversations while you're writing it and you're like oh that's a cool idea but okay it's too big of a concept for a short like just keep it simple for a short so um it's like i don't super find it too hard to like cut it down because I don't know, it just, you just cut it out, you know, like, this is what would work for the story, and sometimes that's even too much to begin with, like, you go get into the edit, and you're like, oh, this is going to be 20 minutes, so there's no way somebody's going to watch 20 minutes of this, let's, we need to cut it down, you know, so, um, it's always better for less, you know, so, that's, that's how I feel, so. Yeah, but, I mean, I, I, I've never made a film for it, but, and I always have, um, short filmmakers, I'm like, it has to, I mean, a lot of indie horror filmmakers can knock it out. They can knock out a story in five minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. But sometimes you see the movie and, and it's great, but you're like, as a watcher, you're like, there's something missing. Like, it didn't tie up the bow perfectly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think like, there's like good and bad about that right like sometimes you're like oh the the bow is not fully tied it leaves you wanting more and therefore you're like okay i want to come back um that happens in feature films too yeah. um and then sometimes you're like this bow has been tied and retied too many <laughs> times and like i'm sick of watching it being tied like i get it i get it, you know so um but it's it's okay. I, i've fallen into that trap too like you know with editing and Sometimes it's like a, a time thing. You're trying to do a time crunch for something, and then other times you just can't let something go, and you you gotta like just let things go because you'll watch it a year later and be like, mm, I should have, I should have cut that. <laughs> and I, besides horror, I love like the bank heist movies. I mean, yeah. I just got done rewatching for the twentieth time. Um, what's it called Baby Driver? And oh yeah, and great movie. And there's always an aspect in it where. You know these robbers they're like acting as a team but there's you're, you're, there's always one or two people in that group that you're like uh they're a little fucking shady they're going to do something wrong they're going to fuck people over and it always happens and yeah. like you know it's going to come you're just waiting but you wonder who it is when it is and to see that in a horror movie it was just absolutely amazing thanks man and you know we didn't want to do a full-on you know, horror trope thing of, you know, it's teenagers or hot girls that lose their clothes miraculously. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, which, I, you know, I, I love those movies. They're too, fun, but, yeah. Like, yeah, they're fun. But uh, I was like, I just, I don't know if I can get into, like, get into it. Because, you know, usually the start of those movies, I'm like, just, I, I don't care. Just be, just fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. You mm -hmm. know, like, I've seen it before. The high school football guy, the girl, I, I, you know, they, it's been done so many times. So, like, I was, I had this thought, and the other, my writing partner, Matt Lamar, she was like, we're floating back two different ideas. I'm like, what about hunters, or what about this? And he's like, what about bank robbers? And I was like, that had to have been done. It's, it's too <laughs> obvious. He's like, no. He's like, I looked at it. There's only one other movie. It's bank robbers, and they fight uh, dinosaurs that are made of CG. It's really bad. Oh. Um, I forget what it's called. But I was like, okay, well, that that's perfect, actually. And then we got really into it. And like some of my favorite movies as well are like you know bank robber heist movies. Actually, a big influence for this movie, and especially the feature, is uh, Michael Mann's Thief. I don't know if you have you ever seen Thief. Yes, I have. Yeah, I, I absolutely love that movie. Mm -hmm. It's just got such a cool, gritty vibe to it, a bit of an indie vibe, too. Um, so there's I, there's a lot of influence of, of Thief in there and Heat and all that. And like, you know, obviously some Reservoir Dogs elements of it, too. It's got a bit of that vibe, you know, going to a safe, play, a safe house and waiting, but horror happens. So um, so that's that was kind of the... the uh, sort of idea behind some of that and then obviously from dust till dawn is, is another reference that people will watch oh. it and they're like oh yeah it's a little bit like you know we'll go one way a misdirect and something else but uh while we were making it we didn't 
I didn't fully realize this, but then after somebody pointed it out, um, they're like, it is also very predator like because they are it kind is. of like, yeah. And then, and then uh, that's actually where the uh, the title uh, sequence came from. Because like you know, at the end of Predator, they show all the the guys and they're they're like they freeze frame stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're like, oh, let's do a play on that. And then <laughs> like obviously it's very different than the Predator one, but like uh, that was kind of the idea that, that that came from there. But yeah, R.I.P. Carl Weathers. Uh, yeah. Yes, R.I.P. Yes. Hollow Creed. Exactly. But uh, um, and and and. If I gave anything away, but the ending, the, the, the person who is the victim throughout the whole entire film becomes, I mean, they become the badass. They become the person that walks away at the end. Yeah. Well, and again, like, we wanted to do horror movie tropes with, like, a final girl and all that, and, or final girls um, and all that, but we wanted to get there in a different way. Like, we, you want... I wanted the audience to think like, "Oh, she's dead three times in a row," yes. or you know, <laughs> and then finally, you know, she makes it out. Like it's earned in a way. Like sometimes you watch stuff and then they get out too easy, or you know, or they get caught too easy. So I wanted there to be like a real struggle. And the actress Julie Mainville, she's absolutely incredible. I saw her in a film Great. called Butchers, which is on Amazon. Which uh, another friend of mine who lives in Ottawa, he made that. Um, great film too. She's a tremendous actor. She'll be back for for the feature. Um, that's the only one I'll, I'll <laughs> say who's who's coming back. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, she, she was awesome to work with as well. All of the actors and actresses were great in this. I mean, I mean, I mean, for an indie horror movie, I mean, it was some man. great Thanks. acting in this movie. Thanks, man. Um, the uh, so Nick with the beard, uh, he plays whiskey. Uh, Kind of the heavy of the movie. Um, we put out a casting call, and uh, he he applied. And I got the email and everything, and uh, he applied with his headshot, looking kind of like he does in the film. And uh, it, his cover letter just said, "Let's kill some shit." <laughs> and I, was, I was like, "Oh, he's our guy." And I said, "He looks like a badass." Yeah. yeah. And I sent it to Matt, like, uh, our, my other producer, and I'm like, oh, look, this is our guy. And he's like, yeah, but I think he means it. I don't know if we should go to the woods with this guy. <laughs> and then uh, Nick is, like, the biggest sweetheart. He's, he's awesome. He's a great guy. Um, but uh, so the, the guy that plays the getaway driver that gets his head to... Uh, um, he actually wasn't supposed to be in the film uh, in that capacity at all. Like uh, he was uh, there to be our um, our uh, like a weapon safety uh, guy, like our, our armorer. And uh, it, we filmed it around uh, COVID times, and the actor that was supposed to play the getaway driver was coming from uh, New York, and it was at that time like Canada had a different uh, COVID test than the states did, and then the Canadian border wouldn't let them over here and then like they sent them packing kind of thing and this was like right before we're supposed to start filming and we're scrambling to find somebody to play the role so he stepped in super super last minute learned all the lines and i, th I think he did a pretty great job for like like it being dropped on him you know, like you know eight hours before filming so yeah so what are you going to do i mean I, I don't know if you i know you can't tell me tell me but but give me some insight what to expect with the full feature so yeah i won't give out too too much um but uh we'll see the heist we'll see how they stole the money um we'll get a little more backstory on all the characters we're going to change up some elements in the story and the killer and things like that um and then so i i would say like if greed and gore the short was in all lowercase letters. Uh, Greed and Gore, the feature, will be in all uppercase letters. <laughs> so, like, it'll be that. Like, it'll be, it'll be bigger, uh, badder, bloodier. Just, it, we're going to double down on everything and times it by 10 uh, is the, the plan. Like, doing, like, these uh, over the summer and, and stuff like that, like, we got into so many festivals. I was completely overwhelmed by how many festivals we got into. Like, I, I truly did not think this would do as well as it did. Um, and it's, it's won so many awards and stuff too. Like, I'm truly, truly, truly grateful to everyone who's checked it out, liked it, and the festivals that have liked it so much uh, to give it an award. But like, 
a lot of the takeaways uh, I noticed while being at these festivals is how much the, the kills played up um, in front of an audience and, you know, a cold audience that doesn't know us, that they're not friends with us to begin with, that they're watching it for the first time. And, you know, when you watch some of these movies in a block, sometimes, you know, sometimes you'll get like a, a dud in front of you or sometimes you'll get a, like a bummer of a movie in front of you. Like it's a great film, but you're like, oh, now I feel sad. And then we're still able to play and still able to get people cheering and laughing at, you know, stuff in all the right spots. It like I was, it, I was like an affirmation where I was like, okay, there are people that want to see this type of stuff. And, you know, seeing like, you know, obviously the success of the Terrifier films, that's also an inspiration where I'm like, okay, there is an audience for this stuff that I, I like as well, yeah. you know? So, <laughs> Um, we're just going to lean into all of that, all the successes of the short and, and double down on a lot of that. So I, I'm really excited about it. I'm nervous about it. It's, it's going to be a huge undertaking, like, you know, an independent film of this, you know, size and, and whatnot. Like there's going to be a lot of sacrifices to do, but, uh, we're ready. We're, we've, we're, we're excited about it. And, and the way I found out about your short is th- shout out to the magic of horror Film yes, festival and definitely. Eva Rodriguez. So she reached out to me and she was like, Hey, do you want to interview some of our alumni from our past couple of years? So I was like, yeah, sure. And she sent me this whole fucking list, right? And like, I just had to go through, I'm just looking at titles. And, I, and, and the titles are the ones I pick. I'm like, uh, <laughs> And I saw greed and gore. What could that be? I was like, Let me see green and gore. Greed and gore. Send me that one. I, I would like to interview this guy. And then I watched it. I was like, oh, this is greeting for. I like this. <laughs> I mean, because the, the Thanks, title Thanks. alone, you know, brought me in. I was, I was interested nice. in the title alone. Nice. That's how I buy wine, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Actually, do you have a second? I'll show you the trophy yes. we won from, from them. I'll, I'll show you real quick. Okay. Oh, maybe I don't have it. Oh, there I got it. All right, sorry. Good. We got this one from them. It was pretty nice. Pretty terrific. This is magic nice. for it, yes. Anyways, truly, truly grateful for this. Anyway, so. A film festival who, who give out actual trophies. That's amazing, isn't it? Because I've seen so many, and they just give out certificates. Or laurels or something like that. Like, I understand yeah. it is an expense, and you have to have a lot of them and stuff. But, you know, we put in so much work in these these films, and, you know, people, you know, spend a lot of money on them, too. So yeah. I really appreciate it when a festival gives out a cool award, and, and a unique award, too, you know? Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a lot of festivals that make some really cool and unique awards, and, and you know, I... I they're really cool to have. Like, I've been, I've been really lucky this year. Like, I, again, I truly did not expect this. Like, we just wanted to make something fun that made us laugh or made us cringe or, you know, that it was for us uh, at the end of the day. And then, you know, to see so many people enjoy it and, and all across the world, mostly in the Midwest, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So all right. not less less back home here in Canada. It's the, the, the gore thing, not, not so much, but that's okay. <laughs> See, I've interviewed, I've only been doing this recently, but I've interviewed um, several Canadian filmmakers. And I agree with you. Canadian filmmakers make great movies, by the way. They make great indie horror movies. But but gore is not as important. Sometimes, well, it's, it's a cost thing sometimes too here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a cost thing. I think there are people making them here, and then they just we have to bring them to the States for, for people to check it out there. And I think the audience is here. The population is less here too. So maybe it's a bit of that, but yeah. festivals here are less excited about it, but I mean, that's okay. Like, uh, I'm happy to, to make it up here. Like I love filming up and around where, where we filmed, um, just outside of Ottawa and it's great locations and it's great vibe and film in the fall and stuff like that. It's just, it's awesome. It's got a, such a mood and tone. Um, and everyone in the, the area is always super excited about when we're filming something. So, um, it's like welcoming to film, but yeah, like, uh, festivals like aren't as into it, but you know, we put on a screening, uh, like a local screening and like people come out to watch it. And like we did two shorts, 
um, at, at a local theater. And, like, you know, we had a great turnout, and people really, really liked it. Two kind of gory films, so, yeah. Nice. Now, where did you find a creepy ass house from in the movie? Yeah, so they, they asked me not to say exactly where it is, but it's okay. uh, west it's uh it's west of Ottawa. <laughs> say. How did you find it though? I mean, were you just looking for creepy ass houses and like uh, this is the one? Yeah, so twofold. One, um like I run a business in Ottawa, I do like uh, real estate kind of photography, videography, like you know, uh, corporate videos and stuff like that. And uh so it, I do get to see a lot of stuff normal people wouldn't normally see and I and I travel down you know rural roads to do cottages and stuff that I, I wouldn't normally uh, travel down but I I put the word out in in the village we we're filming just to some friends that were there and I'm like yeah I'm kind of looking for something old abandoned creepy murder house <laughs> and then somebody was like oh yeah you know down this this road that if you go down like half a click or so um, there's a good one there you should check that out and I drove by and I saw it and I was like, oh, yeah, but I'm like, how am I going to find out who owns this? It's completely abandoned, right? So I made one phone call. This is how small towns work. <laughs> I made one phone call to a realtor friend, and I was like, do you know who owns the house uh, on this road? You know? He's like, oh, yeah, I know the house. Hold on, I'll find out. A couple hours later, I'm in the living room of the guy who owns it down the road. We're hanging out, having a coffee, and we're making a handshake deal that I can film the movie there. <laughs> That's nice. it, was just, it was that easy. Like, you know, I, I just like I was honest with them. Like, yeah, it's gonna be a gory horror movie, and you know, it'll be fun. Um, you know, we'll have insurance. It'll all be safe. It'll be above board and everything. Nothing illegal or anything. And it's like, okay, yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> so. <laughs> And was he pleased with the movie? He liked it. Like they're, he was a, they're an older couple that owns it, um, uh -huh. but they were. Uh, I think they were just tickled that it something like that happened there. Um, yeah. So he told me his his sons would throw big like parties there, like when they were in high school, <laughs> and like you know go to a creepy house and you know have a party. It'd be fun. Bands would play and stuff. So <laughs> I was looking. I was like, damn, that's a that's a creepy ass fucking house. Like. How did he find that? Like, because I know that wasn't you, you didn't pay to get that belt or anything. No, so I was no. like, yeah, I was like, where did he find a creepy house? Or did like he put a ad out? Hey, do you have a creepy fucking house in the middle of nowhere? No, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. You know what's? I don't. Maybe I'm the first one to die in a horror movie or something like that. Like in life, but like it never bothers me to go in those types of places. I don't know what it is. I'll go in there all by myself. I go in the basements. It doesn't bother me at all. Because in my mind, I'm like, at one time, someone was excited about driving home or riding home on their horse to this house. And they were stoked. They're like, they got home. Something really good was cooking in the oven or on the stove. And they're like, I'm home. This is great. I'm in my, my spot. And so I kind of rationalize it like that. Like, you know, so I don't know. Maybe I'm weird like that. But I'm like, at one time, someone was truly thought home sweet home for that place so yes <laughs> before they start murdering people in their basement right <laughs> hey i mean to each their own <laughs> adam where can everyone find you my friend um if you want to follow us on uh, instagram uh, at breed and gore film we post probably the most on there and you know a lot of great behind the scenes photos um, once the film is released, which should be soon, hopefully we're trying to figure out a home for it. Um, you know, we're going to release a ton of behind the scenes content. I'll have all visuals to tell you all about all the, you know, show you, uh, and tell you all about how the effects were done. Um, and there's a lot of effects in the film. There's a lot of even hidden effects and stuff too. Um, so we'll have breakdowns and all that. So it's, it's worth checking it out. And then it's worth it too, like, you know, it, it would help us out a lot just, you know, to have more of a following and you can check us out and, um, you know, follow the journey while we make the, the feature. Um, but, yeah, we're on Facebook. We're on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. All Greed and Gore Film. Um, I think we're on TikTok, too, but we're, I'm not good at posting on there. So, yeah. anyways, Facebook, all the, th all the things, all the spots. Uh, and we really appreciate it. If you do check it out, uh, we uh, I really appreciate it. So, Listen, everyone. Adam, when you get the full feature ready or in post production, I would love to have you back on, man. Man, I'll, I'll be there. You'll, you'll you'll get, I'll give you. A, I'll get you an advanced screener for sure. Yes, I cannot wait to see it, man. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody, whenever it finds a home, please check out Greed and Gore. Follow Adam and his crew on Instagram. It will keep you up to date. So when it does get find a home, you can yeah. definitely check it out. All right. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.